Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard and this is our exam preparation series for AWS Cloud Practitioner exam also known as CLF C02 and today I will present to you with real exam questions, answers and official AWS documentation. You can validate the answers, do some self study and of course pass the exam with really high scores and please do not miss to watch the previous parts of this series. All the links are shared in the description box. So let's get started. So in the last episode, we focused on AWS shared responsibility model. And in this episode, let's focus on AWS global infrastructure. So here comes the very first question for today. Question number 56, part 7. The question says that choose the benefits of AWS global infrastructure. Your options are security, highly customizable, availability, cheapest cloud service provider and the last one is global footprint. So let's check out what are the correct benefits of AWS global infrastructure. The first one is option A security. Then the second benefit is option C availability. And lastly, we have option E global footprint. So let's understand a little bit more on AWS global infrastructure. Here on the documentation, it's given that there are 32 launch regions and each of these regions with multiple availability zones. How many availability zones we have? We have 102 availability zones in AWS. Then we also have 550 point of presence and there are also 13 regional edge caches. And similarly, on this very documentation, you can also find out what are the regions and what are the regions that are coming soon. So already existing regions are marked with these green dots while the red dots represents the upcoming regions. Similarly, you can also understand that there are 35 local zones, 29 wavelength zones and also you can see there are 245 countries and territories served. 115 direct connect locations. You can also understand what are the benefits of global infrastructure. It provides you with security, availability, performance, and not to forget scalability, flexibility, and global footprint. And these are some of the benefits that we saw in the question as well. So here you can validate all of the answers and of course do some self-study. So friends, I have just summarized all of that lengthy documentation. Here you can see what are the major components of AWS global infrastructure. First, we have availability zones we have regions edge locations regional edge caches local zones wavelength zones and lastly outposts and of course there will be a lot of questions on all of these major components in this episodes and in the subsequent episodes so let's move on to the next question here comes question number 57 and it says that which global infrastructure identity is composed of one or more discrete data centers with redundant power networking connectivity and are used to deploy infrastructure your options are edge locations, availability zones, and last one is regions. And the correct answer for this question is option B, availability zones. Moving on to the next question, question number 58, which is saying that which of the following is not one of the five characteristics of cloud computing? Your options are rapid elasticity and scalability, multi-tenancy and resource pooling. And then we have dedicated support agent to help you deploy applications. And then option D is on-demand self-service, resource pooling, and last one is measured service. So have you already guessed one of the characteristics that does not belong to cloud computing? Well, the correct answer is option C, dedicated support agent to help you deploy applications. And why this is so? Because in cloud computing, everything is self-service. You do not have to wait for a support agent to deploy applications or other cloud components for you. Moving on with the question number 59, it says which are the three pricing fundamentals of AWS cloud? Options are option A, compute storage data transfer in AWS cloud. Option B is compute networking and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. Option C is compute storage and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. And the last option is storage functions and data transfer in the cloud. So friends, all of these options are looking very similar. You need to be very careful reading these questions. Let me tell you the correct answer. And that is option C, compute storage and data transfer out of the AWS cloud. So these are three pricing fundamentals of the AWS cloud. Now let's jump on to the question number 60. It says which AWS service offers the easiest way to set up and govern a new secure multi-account AWS environment? Options are AWS CloudFront, 
AWS Guard Rail and then option C is AWS Control Tower and lastly AWS IM and the correct answer for this question is AWS Control Tower so just a quick sneak peek on AWS Control Tower so this one builds on AWS services such as AWS organizations will cover some questions on AWS organization as well offers the easiest way to set up and govern a new secure multi-account AWS environment now let's quickly jump to the question number 61 it says which AWS service is a collection of AWS accounts that you can organize into a hierarchy and manage centrally and your options are AWS CloudFront, AWS Guardrail, AWS Control Tower and lastly AWS Organization. And this time my friends the correct answer is option D AWS organization. So let me take one more question on AWS organization. Here it comes question number 62. It says which AWS account can be used to create an organization. Your options are admin account, management account, member account or lastly AWS organization. So what was your answer? Have you chosen AWS organization or member account admin? Maybe you have chosen admin but the correct answer for this question is option B management account. So first of all, let's understand what is AWS organizations and then I will tell you something about management account. Here you can see that AWS organizations help you centrally govern your environment as you scale your workloads on AWS and whether you are growing startup or a large enterprise organizations help you programmatically create new account and allocate resources simplify billing by setting up a single payment method for all of your account create group of accounts to organize your workflows and apply policies to these groups for governance and also my friends in addition to all of these AWS organization is integrated with other AWS services so that you can define central configuration security mechanism mechanism and also resource sharing across your accounts in your organization and not just that my friends on this documentation you can also understand what are the AWS control tower what are its core concepts and similarly you can also understand how to organize AWS account what is the control management and then you can also understand what are the billings so all in all a great documentation the links are shared in the description box but now let me tell you something more about management account so my friends I'm on the same documentation and here you can read what is a management account and also understand that management account was formerly known as master account you can read here that a management account is a AWS account you use to create your organization so here we validate our answer I will leave you with this documentation you can read whenever your time permits but for now let's jump on to the next question so here it comes question number 63 says which of the following options is not a point of consideration when choosing AWS region and your options are compliance with data governance option B is latency option C is capacity availability and lastly option D is pricing and the correct answer for this question is option C capacity availability so friends capacity is not a limitation you do not have to consider capacity when you're choosing AWS region so capacity is unlimited in the cloud and you do not have to worry about that and just so you know the four points of consideration when choosing the AWS region are compliance with data governance and legal requirements then you have proximity to the customer which means how closer you want to be to your customers then you have available services and features within a region and of course the pricing so in a nutshell you do not have to worry about the capacity when choosing AWS region and now comes question number 64 which says which of the following is not an advantage of cloud computing and your options are trade capital expense or capex for operational expense or opex and then the option b is train your employee less and option c is go global in minutes and finally option d is stop spending money running and maintaining data centers and this one i'm pretty sure you already guessed the answer and that one is option b train your employee less and why this is so because you must train your employees more so that they can use cloud effectively and just a pro tip my friends whenever you're moving your infrastructure or your applications towards the cloud computing always remember you're decreasing your capital expenditure or capex and you're increasing your operational expenditure opex and yes my friends do not see this as a limitation this is basically the advantage of cloud computing so in essence what you're actually gaining is that you reduce a lot of capital expenditure because you do not have to build an on-premises infrastructure you are not bothering about the networking security of the on-premises and of course you do not have to maintain an entire force of IT tech engineers to maintain those servers and on-premises infrastructure so that's the beauty of cloud computing that you substantially reduce your capital expenditure and now comes question number 65 it says AWS regions are composed of your options are 
टू और मोर एज लोकेशन ऑप्शन बी इज वन और मोर डिस्क्रीट डेटा सेंटर एंड लास्टली टू और मोर अवेलेबिलिटी जोन एंड द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन सी टू और मोर अवेलेबिलिटी जोन and we just took a question on aws region but here is the quick definition here you can read that aws regions consist of multiple isolated physically separate availability zones within a geographical area and friends just so you know edge locations are used to distribute content closer to the user we will take some questions on edge location in the subsequent parts so what are you waiting for subscribe to the channel so that you get the timely notifications and also friends please please like the video in case you are liking our content and do share these kind of video with all of your friends colleagues family basically anyone who wants to learn the cloud computing and also my friends in case some of you are also interested in microsoft azure we already have 765 questions on az900 and yes we have launched a very new series on az104 as well with all the real time questions and the answers documentation and there will be lot of action in that series as well so please join the channel subscribe to it and also check out the membership community there you will find lot of different perks and yes you can also directly connect to us so please check out the community membership area and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching